My parents and sister always told me that while she seemed nice enough, something was off. This only increased when Annabelle dropped out of college and shared her plans to become a stay-at-home mom one day so she didn't need to have a degree. Welcome back to They Did What? Your source for the internet's craziest, most entertaining stories where I go for them, analyze them, and most certainly make fun of them. Today, gonna go over a story title. My family warned me I was dating a gold digger and I ignored them. Ten years later, I see they were right. And guys, this story is about a guy. He is presently 35 years old. His wife's 34. And you're going to see, guys, that ultimately his wife kicks him to the curb the second the good life comes to an end. You're going to see in this story, guys, how when he was dating her 10 years early, he was in college, and his family warned him about her. There was something about her they could sense was off. You see, he doesn't come from a lot of money, and he was a guy that obviously was on his grind early on and going places, and clearly, this girl could tell, because he didn't have anything then, but they could tell something about that. There were clues the family could pick up on, but he didn't listen to them, got together, married her anyway, and years later, when he loses his job and things change and they can't have the lifestyle that she's used to, and believe me, she milks it for everything it's worth in terms of the lifestyle with the kids, boom, like that. Her reaction... No surprise there. And wait till you see how she handles things and how quickly she replaces him after the good life ends. As an example, guys, you have to be careful for the gold diggers out there. And even if you don't have anything going on for you right then and there, a, a, a gold digger playing the long game can say, okay, this guy's got potential. I may not be able to get everything this moment, but I will down the road. And if you got family or friends who you know truly you can trust, truly that love you, and they're telling you a girl you're with is trouble, listen to them. At least take it into consideration. Because sure, you can have family and friends that are jealous of you and try to sabotage your happiness. I get that. But if you truly have a good thing going, they love you, and, and it's clearly, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, listen. And he doesn't. So this story is really important of listening to the people that care about you and treat you with love. And also how quickly a guy can be dropped like this when he stops providing for these types that clearly pick and choose and wait for the guy that's going to be a provider. It's, it's really sad for him. So it starts off, he says, uh, I, now a 35-year-old male, met my wife Annabelle, now 35, when we were in college. My family was lower middle class and I was hustling to make sure student loans didn't kill me post-graduation. At first, everything seemed great. How many times have we heard that, guys? She was truly my rock through some really hard times. I struggled with anxiety and depression, as well as imposter syndrome. She had her own struggles, too. I thought we fit well. Okay, she seemed to be... You can see why he thought she was a good one. She was with him when he was obviously not making a lot of money and struggling, you know. But she obviously saw potential. My parents and sister always told me that while she seemed nice enough, something was off. This only increased when Annabella dropped out of college and shared her plans to become a housewife, stay-at-home mom one day, so she didn't need a degree. Back then, there was no guarantee that I would have a high-paying job, but I also didn't mind her staying home with our future kids. She dropped out of school because she knew this guy was a sure thing. She knew, while there were no guarantees, this is the type of guy that's going to make things happen. I'm, I'm sure we've all known people like that when they're young. They, nothing's happened yet, but you can tell this guy or this gal is going to make something of themselves. One day, that's what she was banking on. And he's like, I don't mind, she'll be a stay-at-home mom. Uh, then I got an offer for my dream job. Six figures, company car, travels, and the works. Now, this is over a decade ago when six figures bought a lot more than it does now. We don't know what six figures. It could be a $100,005 sal annual salary. Or 250, we don't know. But if he was that young, getting 100k even outside of college, that's pretty damn impressive. And I'm assuming he was making more as time went on, because this all started 10 years ago. They'd also pay me to obtain my master's, something that seemed out of reach, considering I was drowning in student loan debt. So bear in mind he has some debt. I could finally move out of my parents' house and get one of my own. I used part of my signing bonus to buy an engagement ring for Annabelle. That's stupid. You should have used that to uh, pay off some of your debt or uh, save up a nest egg or for um, down payment for a house. 
not some big ass engagement ring. But he was young, and again, this is the perspective of a man who's 45. Because I began dating her prior to the money, I never imagined she was in it with she was with me for anything else. You could see how he thinks that, but still, you gotta be aware. She loved me when I was a broke college student, and we had planned our futures back then. How was it different? Uh, my family tried to point out the red flags. Annabelle planned an over-the-top expensive wedding. Clearly, he knew she wanted an expensive engagement ring. Clear, and then here we go. Over-the-top expensive wedding. Um, call me crazy, but isn't tradition that the, the bride's family pays for the wedding? So, right? She wanted the biggest house she could find. Okay? Add these things up, guys. My signing bonus was drained rather quickly, and I was worried about not saving enough. I constantly told her to slow down. We don't need the best of everything, and she would for a while, then it'd pick up again. Because you're not laying down the law. That's why. So her actions are showing exactly what was really going on behind the scenes. And by the way, they don't have any kids yet. This is all coming from him. He has, and they're not even married yet, at least not right away. He should be calling the shots, but you know how these guys operate. We had two children together who are now eight years old and four. The big spending got worse when they came along. Well, that's going to happen with kids. But again, I was okay with it. I was making good money. We could afford it. Annabelle grew up in a similar situation as me, so I figured she just wanted to spoil the kids. And herself. And show all the people she probably grew up with, look what I got. Ha ha ha. Then I got laid off from my job. It wasn't out of nowhere. The, the field I'm in has slowly begun to dwindle over the years. I, saw, I stayed on as long as I could, but at this point, the company is going under. Annabelle was worried when I relayed the news to her, but I informed her that we had our savings and we'd be okay until I found work again. News flash: a gal like this doesn't want to be just okay. She wants to be doing very well. Better than the Joneses. And let, she wants the Joneses to be the Joneses to be envious of her. I was hired at a new company in a similar but different field within one month. The catch, I'm making significantly less money. It's enough to live off of. We can stay at our house, but th but things need to change. I point out to the kids. I pointed out that the kids can no longer go to a private school anymore. We can't take multiple lavish trips a year. No more frivolous spending. She wasn't happy. But again, I gave her grace. It's a big adjustment even for me. So, I can understand to a degree. Anybody that is used to a certain lifestyle and it's a dramatic 180, it could be a little bit of a shock. But if she truly loves this guy, he's her guy. In sickness and health, richer or poorer, she's with him. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. But guess what? Her actions are going to communicate real quick real effing quick what he is to her. And I gotta say this. I'm not quite sure if this job he took, which is making a lot less, is a temporary stopgap thing so he can find something better, or this is what he's content on having going forward. I would disagree and think it's a mistake to just take this and say, well, this is how it is. This is the card I've been dealt. This is the hand I've been dealt for the rest of my life. If you had that good lifestyle, you can certainly take this one for now to make sure you don't lose the house until you get something better. But it's hard to hear what he, hard to tell what he's saying here. Just two months after I started my new job, two months, Annabelle came to me and said, I don't think I can do this anymore. I was taken off guard and we had several discussions that amounted in her taking the kids to be with her mother while we took a break. I already knew our marriage was over. No one can come back from a break unscathed. Two months, uh, 10 years, he's been giving her the life. And I'm willing to bet you they don't have a whole lot of savings because he said the biggest house she could get, most expensive wedding, he bought her the big-ass engagement ring. That was on him, but you know she pushed the buttons for him to do that. Lavish spending, lavish vacations. The kids were both private school. And I got no problem with putting the kids in private school. That's depending on the area and everything, etc., cetera, et cetera, Two months, he's toast. Guys, this is a perfect example. And by the way, you're going to see in a moment, 
in the comment section. The go the commenters overwhelmingly side with her, and we're not even just we're not finished yet. And they're fixated on the fact that well, she's not technically a gold digger because he didn't have a lot of money in the beginning. Well, she can you can see through her actions. Yeah, she's digging for some gold. She's enjoying the lifestyle. She knew he was a up and comer. He was going to make something of himself. And the second that lifestyle was gone, goodbye, right here. You must really screen your girl and vet your girl. It gets even worse. Uh, sure enough, a few weeks after she moved out, she told me she wanted a divorce. She claims that we had grown apart. Said I worked too many hours at my job and I was never around. Um, he worked all those hours to provide so you and the kids can enjoy that upper middle class lifestyle. The ones that a lot of people envy. That's why he was gone. I'm sure he liked to have been home with his children and his wife, but he was doing that for them. And I don't want to hear because she stayed at home, he then could do all these things. Believe me, she's the one that declared I'm going to be a stay-at-home mom when they were like 22 years old or something like that. It's because of him. People in the comment section said that about her. It's ridiculous. While it's true I did work a lot, I was home every night for dinner. We had all our weekends together. I traveled often, but she always came with me up until our oldest started elementary school. She never complained about a damn thing. In fact, I once said I was tired from working a long week, and I felt guilty that I was home alone with two kids. But she assured me she was happy. So... She's not going to say, I'm leaving you because you can no longer provide me the lifestyle that I've been accustomed to and feel like I deserve. Uh, because I'd make her the villain. But what she can say is, we've grown apart. You're never there. Therefore, putting the blame on him. You know all the thing about women and accountability. I asked her several times that she was, it was about me losing money. Dude, she's never, ever going to tell you the truth. She denied it up and down. She married me so young and need, need to see what was out there. She put it all on me. Would I tell you about accountability? Naively, I told myself this is what had happened when you marry your college sweetheart. You grow apart. I didn't want to believe that my entire marriage had been a lie. Well, nobody can blame for not wanting to believe it. That's a very tough pill to swallow, but that's what happened. It was only for what he could provide. End of story. And a lot of you guys aren't going to be shocked by this. Maybe some of you watching this have experienced this. That's terrible, but there are pieces of shit out there. Within two weeks of filing for divorce, she was with someone new. Man, she definitely uh, didn't waste any time, huh? The reality came crashing down. She tried to play it off that they just happened to meet, but they moved fast. Translation, she put on the charm. Clearly, she's kept her looks at 30, 40 years old. She was moving in with him within three months. You know who she's with, guys. A typical blue-pilled nice guy simp. She went out somewhere. She could look around the room and scan the room, scan the grocery store, wherever she met this guy. Like the Terminator looking for Sarah Connor. Boom. Target acquired. Nice guy simp with some money. Went to him. Put on the charm. That guy thought, yes, I finally got a girl. And he's, she's moving in with him in three months. They were engaged before our divorce was even final. This guy is a surgeon. He makes six figures a year. Surgeon, huh? My dad was a doctor. My dad was a surgeon. And let me tell you, he had to work a lot of hours. Oftentimes, he'd have to do that 24-hour shift, you know? And so, if she was complaining that her the guy telling the story wasn't around much, guess what? The surgeon's not going to be around all the time either. But never mind. They grew apart. I don't know if the cheating began when I got laid off or before. I suppose it doesn't matter. We're divorced now. Due to my schedule, I only see my kids every weekend and I hate it. I regret not making Annabelle sign a prenup as she got half of everything. Well, that's going to happen when, you know, you've been married for 10 years and she was a stay-at-home mom and you were the only provider and she did, I'm assumed, take care of the kids at least when they're around. So, of course, she's going to get half. Hopefully, that because she's married a surgeon who can provide that lifestyle, he won't have to pay alimony. He'll be doing child support, but not alimony. My family is aware that she moved on, and I know they had their suspicions, but we never spoken about it. In the three years since the divorce, okay, so this is 
three years since the divorce and then 10 years of marriage. So they all got together 13 years earlier. They have never uttered an I told you so, even though I deserve it. Well, that's very nice of them because they could have. I went from loving Annabella to despising her. I love my children very much, but I hate that I wasted 10 years on a woman who I only wanted me for my money. I should have so much, I, I should have so much more saved. I should have so much more saved money. But she either squandered it on useless crap when you were married or took half of the divorce. God, I hate her. Well, dude, I don't blame you at all. But what's done is done. You're 34 years old. Your life is not over yet. It's just getting it's just getting started. You are in the where the prime begins. You can either walk around pissed off and hating her for the rest of your life, or you can uh, let success be the re best revenge. Yeah, move on. End of fucking story. Go back to getting yourself a career where you're getting paid a lot more money that you freaking deserve because you're obviously a, a, a hardworking guy. Because by you going back to a career where you're making more money or even more money than you were before, believe me, she'll notice. And then maybe if you're a relationship guy and if you want to get together with gals one day, you can have a girlfriend. And ideally, younger and prettier than your ex-wife. I guarantee you. That's going to make her nuts, seeing that you're doing even better than you were before with a prettier, younger gal in your arm. Because believe me, his kids will mention, oh, well, dad got that, this amazing new job, and dad bought a new house, and dad's dating Melissa, and Melissa's so kind, so cool and kind and fun, and Melissa's 10 years younger than their mom and better looking body. Oh, that'll get to her. But only, of course, if he wants to do this for himself. But I guarantee you, through working on himself, self-improvement, he'll be all right. But I wouldn't go rushing in any relationship anytime soon. And quite frankly, not rushing into a marriage or getting married at all. That means you can't date girls. Just be careful. That's what I recommend. But you can see, guys, he should have listened to his family. They knew something was up. And of course, kicked him to the curb the second he could no longer provide. Now, guys, I want to read some comments here. Three of them. One that is for him and two that's against him. And sadly, the whole comment section, I would say 85% are people against him. On her side, no joke, fixated on the fact that he chose Gold Digger in the title, saying, well, she's not a gold digger because he didn't have any money in the beginning. Well, she was using him for everything it was worth, and the second that stopped, she was out of there, left him high and dry. So, come on here. But still, throwing all this crap that she was a stay-at-home mom, and she sacrificed for him so he could get a better job. No, she wanted to be a stay-at-home mom so she didn't have to do anything. And, that, and he was working all the time to provide. But... I find that, sadly, most people are fucking idiots, and so I have to understand, recognize they're not going to get the big picture, and they're quick to respond. And plus, Reddit is full of a bunch of, well, these are probably women they're responding to, and a bunch of emotional morons. So here's some comments. This is one person against him. This guy says, uh, yeah, OP is totally downplaying the reality that she was a stay-at-home mom with small children for a decade by her choice. That is not a vacation, and her support allowed him to progress in his career. She wanted it that way. The fact that he doesn't seem to value that contribution is very telling and may partially explain why the marriage didn't work. I guarantee he valued her contribution and raising kids. I know raising kids is not easy. I don't have kids, but I know plenty of people that do. But still. Also, wanting a private school for her kids does not make her a gold digger. I'll agree with that. But I'm sure she likes saying my kids are in private school. He sees it as frivolous expense, but that's investing in the children's education and future. Cheating, if there was any, is obviously wrong, but she would not be a gold digger in my book. This is just a regular broken marriage. Um, how about the fact that she, the second the lifestyle changed because he had a different job, she immediately kicked into the curb and immediately set her sights on some other poor sucker, some poor victim, like that. No, and, and a surgeon, okay? She didn't pick a guy that works at Walmart. She picked a freaking surgeon. Not accident. She knows exactly what she's doing. But again, this guy doesn't, guy or gal wrote this, doesn't get it. Now here's one in support of the guy. He says here, he is 34 and they've been married for 10 years. Uh, right out of college, he got a six-figure job, which means he was majoring in something that would be high paying. Sociology, political science, art, etc. degrees can't expect 100K right out of school. And by the way, just because six figures put you in the 100K plus category, it could have been 110, it could have been 130, it could have been 150. We don't know what he got, okay? Automatically, everybody thinks it's $100,000 around on the nose. Technically, six figures could be $999,999 a year, but obviously he didn't get that. 
She was with him for very little time before he started making a lot of money, and she likely knew he'd be earning a lot based on his degree. Correct. And obviously, his she could tell he was an ambitious dude. He also bought an expensive ring prior to the expensive mar- marriage. Expensive marriages are usually one year in advance. They probably proposed around 23-ish. That, that means he found a six-figure job while in school, and she quit school as a junior or senior to be a stay-at-home mom, which she would not become for four more years. Correct. She's a stay-at-home mom for years. But again, the morons that are on her side aren't connecting the dots because, well, they're morons. Instead of finishing school, she was spending a lot of money and chilling around the house. <clears throat> she dropped out before he even finished school, so it's likely, highly unlikely, highly likely she knew she'd get a good job with his degree. He would get a good job with his degree. And the last comment, this is someone against him, says here, I was confused as I was reading this post. There was no gold to dig when she met him. What he's describing is someone who likes to spend. Spoiling the kids, having a big wedding, and wanting a big house aren't indicators of a gold digger either. Um, when somebody has to have the biggest house possible, not because they want to have a bunch of kids that need bedrooms, but just the biggest house possible, that shows someone that wants to show off. And it's his money. And by the way, they bought that house, what well, sounds like, prior to having the children. It's not an accident. And the biggest wedding possible. Again, if this was someone that was good and grew up from very meager beginnings, they'd be a lot smarter with money. Even for the OP's account, it doesn't sound like she was spending a lot of things just for herself. Actually, he did say she was spending a lot of things on herself and much of crap. Useless crap. I think that was his words. It sucks for OP that she dumped right after his huge pay cut, but a drastic change in lifestyle and financial pressures could have been the last straw for their relationship. They didn't sound, <coughs> aside from the mortgage and the private schools, like they were in deep financial jeopardy. You know, it's just, they obviously, she spent so much for that lifestyle. And they would have had a lot more saved up. If it was up to him, and he should have laid down the law, and he'll learn his lesson, they would have a smaller house. If the public schools were good, the kids could have been public school, but maybe the public school area was bad. You never know. But it doesn't sound like they were in a bad neighborhood, obviously. So who knows? But the point is, she knew what she was getting into. She deliberately chose him. She could see he was an ambitious guy. Obviously, he probably got that job right out of school, and so obviously he was majoring in something that was going to definitely pay a return on his degree, and she knew it. And that's why she declared, I'm going to be a stay-at-home mom. And he, of course, goes along with this thing, I'm going to take care of my woman. And look what happened. And his family warned him. So the next time, guys, your family or friends who you can trust warn you about a gal and says there's something up with her and I can't put my finger on it, or red flags, listen to them. And listen to your gut. And be aware, there are gals that will Look at the big picture down the road and see things. And also, hell, I got female subscribers, all 4% of you. There can be guys doing kind of the same thing, so be aware of that too. If your friends and family say, hey, he's trouble, and I know girls love guys that are trouble, and think, that, oh, I can fix him. I like this fixer-upper. I like he's a challenge. He was damaged guy, and I can fix and save him. It's the same damn thing. Listen to your friends and family who care about you. Otherwise, you could be royally screwed in one form or another. Be careful to all of you guys. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me just think about this. And also, guys, you come across a good story like to share, by all means, email it to me, strongsuccessfulmail at gmail.com. Just give me some time to get to it, and I will when I get a chance. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.